After acquiring a magical power that attracts every woman he touches, a man is unaware of its dangerous consequences. Upon arriving at their advertising agency, Felix Blythe prepares to start his shift, but his attention falls on Sarah Walker, their new client. He immediately fancies her and lets his gaze linger on Sarah, oblivious that his boss is beside him. Ron breaks Felix from his reverie and insults him for being unpopular with women. To make him feel more miserable, Ron calls Jane, one of Felix's co-workers, and urges her to make fun of him too. Once he's finished insulting the poor man, Jane takes over and asks about Felix's weekend. Felix answers that he hung out with a female friend, leading Jane to inquire if he slept with her. Uncomfortable, Felix evades the question as he believes it breaches his privacy. Instead, he asks her about her weekend, but Jane's no longer interested in talking with him, so she leaves. Now alone, Felix returns to prepare for his work, but Sarah approaches him requesting if he can help her carry her boxes. Due to her proximity, Felix stutters, but he eagerly accepts. While they're on their way, Felix bumps into a man who gives him a calling card. Immediately, the man scrambles away as another man strikes him with a plant. Sarah checks on him, but Felix assures her he's fine carrying the boxes. As he continues his walk, he checks on the calling card and sees it's about a self-help seminar. Shortly after, they finally arrive at Sarah's residence, and Felix quickly puts down the boxes near the stairs. Felix marvels at the mansion's lavishness, but his attention gets cut by Sarah who's already ascending the stairs. Once upstairs, Sarah introduces him to the three members of their religious cult called Sisters of Light. When their introductions are exchanged, Sarah reminds her members to practice their worship songs. This stuns the three women, so Elena suggests that Felix can help them with their practice. Awkwardly, Felix admits that he's not a singer, but since the women's gaze is on him, he's pressured to accept their request. During their practice, Felix soulfully sings a verse, but Nivinovat stops him and tells him not to sing the said verse. She clarifies that it's their savior's part, making him realize his action is unacceptable. Due to that, Felix leaves the room, trying to evade the trio's piercing gaze. Returning downstairs, Sarah offers Felix a drink and he politely accepts. Thrown off by his politeness, Sarah tells him to address her by her first name, and he gladly complies. After giving him the drink, Sarah informs him that she'll head upstairs to her husband. This new information leaves Felix speechless, especially since his crush is actually married. Moments later, Felix and Ron shoot James Walker's political campaign advertisement. However, they encounter difficulty progressing throughout the shoot since James makes a mistake in delivering his message. Instead of owning up to his mistakes, James blames Felix for distracting him. Because of his outburst, Ron suggests that they move on and forget about reading his script. This time, James will give his impromptu speech, making him more confident. As the camera rolls, James starts strong, but as he progresses, he gets carried away and uses threatening words in delivering his message. Afraid he'll say more, Ron quickly cuts him and recommends a new approach to his campaign. Sarah will be a part of his video. Ron signals the start of the shoot, so Felix uses the clapperboard, but as he snaps it close, he accidentally hits Sarah, causing her to slap him. Later that evening, Felix attends the self-help seminar from the calling card the man gave him earlier. It turns out that the man is a sidekick to a self-help guru named Izvyatoslav Rao. During one of his segments, he asks for a volunteer he'll help to bet the woman they desire. Izvyatoslav scans the audience, and his gaze lands on Felix. Immediately, Izvyatoslav chooses him, and he invites Felix onto the stage. Upon arriving on stage, Izvyatoslav asks Felix if he's a wimp, but a sudden cough attacks him, making the audience laugh at him. Once his cough subsides, Felix claims that he's not. With his answer, Izvyatoslav orders him to make a move on his assistant, Amalia. Though reluctant, Felix complies and tries his best to carry the conversation. But since he's an awkward man and inexperienced with talking to women, he becomes the show's laughingstock. When everything becomes unbearably awkward, Izvyatoslav ends their conversation and begins to provide his analysis of the event earlier. For him, Felix has made a lot of mistakes, leading him to question how he survives living that way. Shortly after, Felix heads to a bar to drink his embarrassment away when a man surrounded by women enters the establishment. Tired of the attention, the man orders the group to leave him for a while as he wants to enjoy a drink by himself. Finally alone, he orders a drink and comments that he'll never get used to such attention. Contrary to what he thinks, Felix envies the man's situation, thinking it's not that hard to do. However, the man remarks that he thinks that way since he hasn't experienced it. This insults Felix, but the man quickly realizes his mistake and apologizes. Then, he explains that the flock of women doesn't leave him easily, so he perceives it as a curse. Still, Felix thinks it's a blessing, 
Therefore, the man tells him that he used to think that way initially, leading him to possess such power. When Felix remains confused, the man elaborates that his power can be transferred to someone else. As long as the current bearer has comprehensively informed his successor about the dangers the power bears, it can be successfully transferred to him. Upon hearing this, Felix asks if he can possess it, and the man considers it for a bit. Then, he orients him about the permanence of the power unless he's found someone willing to acquire it. Eagerly, Felix confirms, but the man continuously warns him. Regardless of his words, Felix is excited to be the new bearer of his power. Therefore, the man demonstrates the ritual, and Felix religiously follows. After a few seconds, the man announces that Felix is now possessing the power. To test it, the man touches the waitress, but the woman takes away her hand and insults him. In joy, the man bids Felix farewell, but Felix asks him what he's supposed to do afterward. The man tells him he'll figure it out, but reminds him that his power manifests when he touches someone. The following day, while he's on the way to work, Felix bumps into various women, causing them to get smitten with him instantly. Not wasting time, Felix gets into an intimate moment with whomever he touches. However, as he progresses with his self-discovery, the flock of women becomes aggressive toward him, so he tries to wear a glove to stop his stimulating touch. Despite his efforts, they overpower and attack him. Later that night, a tired and bruised Felix tries to walk home, but the flock of women finds him again, stopping him in his tracks. They try to have a moment with him, but Felix refuses as he wants to rest. Still, one of them begs to make love with him, but he refuses, emphasizing that he's not their toy. He tries to reason that he needs to rest, but the women argue that they can take care of him. Felix doesn't have the energy to entertain them, so he threatens to use his gloves and wetsuit against them. When the group begs him not to use them, Felix uses this opportunity to make the group realize the pressure he's currently experiencing. Therefore, he requests them to give him a break to recover energy and time to understand his newfound capability. Due to his sound reason, the group eventually relents, but they give him a day to recover so they can continue their fun the next day. The following day at work, Ron scrutinizes Felix's face and concludes that he got beaten up. This leads him to ask Felix about what he did last night, and the man answers he hung out with his friends. Finding this a reason to tease him, Ron maliciously asks if his friends are female, and Felix confidently confirms. Though stunned, Ron still tries to make fun of him, but Felix doesn't pay him attention. Suddenly, Ron stalls and realizes that Felix's conquests have visited him. Ron looks at the window and sees that Felix is telling the truth. Now worried, Felix quickly packs his belongings as his visitors are increasing. Once Felix makes his leave, the flock of women rushes inside the room and runs after him, aggressively shoving Ron in the process. A while later, Felix visits Professor Jones to talk about the curse he once believed was a power. Admittedly, Professor Jones finds his case fascinating. Therefore, he conducts research and stumbles upon a Sumerian legend, wherein it tells the story of Uruk the Great, who acquired the power to enchant the woman of his dreams through the help of his spiritual advisor, Saki. According to Professor Jones, Uruk succeeded in marrying the beautiful Ashihara, and they had 14 children. However, Uruk was believed to have passed away due to a heart attack after fighting for alimony against his wife. After telling the legend, Professor Jones reveals that the potential successors of the curse are Giacomo Casanova, Don Juan, and the Beatles, though he clarifies that these are yet to be verified. Regardless, Felix feels honored as he believes he's following a long tradition. Grateful for the man's help, Felix expresses his gratitude to Professor Jones and takes his leave. Once outside Professor Jones' residence, Felix is unaware that Ron has followed him and has eavesdropped on their conversation. The following day, Felix runs for his life as another swarm of women chases him. Izyatoslav almost bumps into Felix, but thankfully, his sidekick's able to pull him to the side of the road. When realization kicks in, the two wonder how Felix became popular with the ladies, especially since they've witnessed how awkward he was on their show a few days ago. Proudly, Izyatoslav opines that he must have learned how to attract women from their show. His sidekick laughs and rejects his claims. Out of nowhere, a woman runs past them, causing Izyatoslav to roll down the lake. Meanwhile, Felix is busy with his task when Jane approaches him and teases him for his sudden popularity with the ladies. However, she confidently declares that his charm won't work on her as she's fed up with him. Because of her challenge, Felix touches her knee, causing her to feel intense pleasure. While she's still under his influence, Felix asks her if there are other things she needs, and she reveals that Ron wants him to come to his office as he has an important matter to discuss with him. Inside his boss's office, Ron enthusiastically greets him and expresses his surprise at how popular Felix has become. Moving on with his agenda, he reveals his plans to promote him as he is impressed with his charisma. Felix is honored with his offer but admits he's tired of dealing with women lately. Upon hearing this, Ron insists he accepts the offer, especially since some of
someone special to him will arrive and they'll discuss his future. Moreover, he strongly believes that with Felix's talent and his ideas, they'll become unstoppable. When Felix remains quiet, Ron excitedly informs him that he'll show him something cool. Ron leads Felix into a sofa's secret compartment and urges his subordinate to get in. Afterward, he orders him to put his hand through the hole in the sofa's board. Unbeknownst to Felix, Ron locks his hand as he'll be using it to seduce their visitor. Felix tries to protest, but Ron's mind is already made up, and he is already covering his hand to hide it from their visitor's sight. A few seconds later, Sarah enters Ron's office, and the man tries to make a move on her. Quickly, she dodges and warns him that he'll lose his life because of his actions. Not wanting to continue the topic anymore, Sarah inquires about James' campaign posters. Immediately, Ron grabs the posters and allows her to judge their draft. For her, it's a little basic, but she assures him that James will like it. Ron shifts the question to her, asking what she likes, and proceeds to make a move on her. Sarah tries to avoid him, but she accidentally touches Felix's hand, causing her to feel excited. Finally getting the reaction he wants, Ron takes advantage of this and makes love to her, whereas Felix's heart breaks from his boss's betrayal. That night, Felix goes home crestfallen and dejected after getting used against his will. But the most painful of all is when Ron uses him to make a move on the woman he likes. The following day, Felix is featured on the news due to the frequent sightings of him getting chased by women. As a result, media analysts think it's just a gimmick for a campaign since Felix works at a PR agency. Contrary to the critics, Felix's agency denies their allegations. The news also shows the footage of how Felix is chased by a group of women wanting to touch him. Because of this cover, James becomes interested in Felix's power, making him want to acquire it to ensure a flawless win in the election. Similarly, Ron discovers Felix's situation and opines that running away from such a blessing is a waste. Now determined, Ron promises to find a more deserving bearer of Felix's power. At the local bar, Izvyatoslav and his sidekick also take an interest in Felix's ability, believing their show helped him build his self-esteem. Thinking he'll be more influential, Izvyatoslav pledges to take Felix's power and keep it for himself. Later that evening, Felix heads to a bar hoping to find his successor. The first man he tries to talk to immediately declines his offer, thinking that Felix is a fraud. Moving on to his next target, he tries to strike up a conversation with an old man, but Felix discovers that he's simply a depressed man. As a result, he orders a drink for him to enjoy and just thinks of another way to transfer his curse. In an act of dancing to the tunes, Felix performs the ritual, hoping that someone will imitate it. Yet his efforts are in vain as a patron dismisses him, thinking that Felix is making a move on him. Unbeknownst to Felix, Izvyatoslav and his sidekick are in the same room as him, wearing their disguise to observe his actions stealthily. Felix finds another target and lures him into performing the ritual, telling him it'll help him attract any woman he likes. Gladly, the man accepts and copies Felix's moves. But when Felix instructs him to say that having all the women in the world might cause him trouble, his enthusiasm simmers down. Confused, Felix asks him why he doesn't want to continue, and the man answers that he doesn't believe in such a statement. Left with no choice, he begs the man to follow his moves. While there in the middle of the ritual, Felix unknowingly touches a woman who simply wants to pass by. As a result, the woman interrupts Felix's plans. The next day, Felix overhears James and Ron's conversation about him. He learns that the two are planning to take his curse for their gain. Ron's even discovered the ritual and demonstrates it to James. Wanting to confront them, Felix appears, catching the men's attention. James performs the ritual in front of him, hoping to acquire his curse. Then, James approaches Ron's secretary and touches her. Instead of swooning over him, the secretary slaps him in the face. Because of this, James angrily gives Ron a 24-hour deadline to make the power work. Now alone with his boss, Felix confronts Ron about discovering the ritual. So the man admits that he's eavesdropped on them when Felix visited Professor Jones. Felix becomes angry, so Ron tries to use an excuse that he only did it to watch over him. Still, Felix shouts in frustration, leaving him to get to the point. Ron convinces him that they need to work with James to survive in their careers. As Ron leaves, Felix sees Professor Jones inside the office and approaches him. He inquires how to lose the curse, but he's torn on how to safely transfer it after learning that some people want to exploit it. Calmly, Professor Jones suggests that he let himself transfer his curse to bad people. He clarifies that once a bad person acquires the curse, he'll suffer an auto-reverse effect. Hence, the successor will not attract women. Instead, they will harbor great hatred toward him. With new knowledge about the curse, Felix
Felix gladly thanks Professor Jones and leaves. Unbeknownst to Felix, is Vyatoslav and his sidekick are waiting for him outside and abduct him. Shortly after, Felix wakes up and finds himself in a bathtub, and Elena is bathing him. Suddenly, Sarah catches his attention, expressing her curiosity with his touch. Wanting to try it, Sarah gets in the bathtub with him and urges him to touch her. Felix eagerly complies, and his touch gives her the pleasure she craves. However, Sarah expresses her plan for his power, making Felix suspicious. This leads Felix to touch her face with both of his hands, sending her an intense amount of pleasure. As a result, Sarah loses her life. At that moment, Izvyatoslav and his sidekick appear, catching Felix's attention. Izvyatoslav finally reveals that he's the founder of the Sisters of Light Cult and he's their so-called savior. Confused, Felix remembers that Izvyatoslav runs self-improvement seminars, so the man clarifies that it's his day job. Wanting to get straight to the point, Izvyatoslav professes his desire to acquire Felix's power, believing it's his destiny. Without a fight, Felix agrees to give it as he's no longer interested in it. As Felix teaches Izvyatoslav the ritual, Ron makes a sudden appearance, halting them. He argues that he sold the power to James so that he can win the elections. To further convince Izvyatoslav to give up acquiring the power, he enumerates the possible benefits he can get if James wins. Regardless, Izvyatoslav believes he has to be Felix's successor as he aspires to be worshipped. When Ron refuses to relent, Izvyatoslav unremorsefully stabs him. Then, he resumes the ritual with Felix. But when he's about to say the magical sentence, he gets distracted. This time, James appears and argues that he needs the curse. Since Izvyatoslav refuses, James attacks him. However, Izvyatoslav's sidekick comes to his rescue and ends James' life. Now that they don't have anyone to distract them, Izvyatoslav orders Felix to continue their ritual. A few seconds later, Izvyatoslav successfully completes it and acquires the curse. On the other hand, Felix is extremely happy now that he's free from the curse. Moments later, Izvyatoslav meets his followers and excitedly wants to try his powers. Upon touching them, their smiles fade into wrath, confusing Izvyatoslav. Suddenly, his followers surround him, and they furiously attack him. In the turn of events, his supposed cult meeting turns into a savage bloodbath. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.